Welcome back to our sessions on, on chemistry. Here we are uh, looking at uh, simplifying this subject. We want to make it simple so that uh, as we agree, we will make it easier for students to pass in this particular subject. This is uh, another session. We started some sessions last year, but uh, we got disrupted at some point and uh, we, we discontinued. Now we are back. We want to continue from where we left and uh, we want to start with this uh, topic on uh, more concepts, more uh, formula and chemical equations. It's one of the main topics in Form 3, a uh, topic that uh, students need to understand so that they are able to tackle questions. It's a common, very common uh, topic even in exams. So I think we just get started and uh, we progress. Thank you. Well. So we start with some definitions where we define a mole and mole is the SI unit of amount of substance in, in an element, in a compound, in, 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 a, in, in, in any substance. Yeah, so it's the amount of substance within a a co a co an, uh, an element or a compound. A Fugato constant is the number of particles in one mole and it is normally 6.023 times 10 to the power 23. Molar mass on the other hand is the mass of one mole of a substance. This is what we normally refer to as uh, R REM, uh, the relative atom, uh, um, atomic mass, uh, uh, molecular mass, and it is normally uh, uh d d given even in exams you find that for carbon it is 12 gram for sodium it is 23 gram and for iron for example is 56 grams the molecular mass is a relative molecular mass or rmm which is the sum of rams of atoms making a molecule for example carbon four oxide co2 is uh, 44 because it is composed of 12 grams of carbon one carbon and 16 grams of oxygen to oxygens that is 32 so if you add 12 to 32 you get 44 grams atomicity is the number of atoms making a molecule is if for example o2 for oxygen is uh, two two atoms of oxygen so we can say there that oxygen is the gas is di diatomic carbon dioxide for example or carbon four oxide is uh, three atoms because there is one carbon and two, two, two atoms of oxygen. So atomicity is the number of atoms. The relative formula mass is the mass of com of a compound. The sum of RAMs of the different elements making a compound. For example, sodium chloride is made up of sodium and chlorine. So the relative formula mass for an NaCl is uh, sodium 23 plus chlorine 23. 35.5 you get 58.5 so that is what is referred to as relative formula mass let us do some questions because uh, in this topic there are a lot of questions and basically what comes in exams is questions and uh, they are calculated in nature so for example you may be asked to calculate the number of moles in 0 0.23 grams of sodium as you know and you'll be given in exams is that the RAM of uh, sodium is 23. So one mole of sodium is 23 grams. Then how many moles are there in 0 0.23 grams of, 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 of sodium? That is easy. You just um, uh, do cross-examination. You just uh, divide 0 0.23 grams with 23. You get the number of moles, which is 0 0.01 moles. Uh, you may be asked to calculate the 0 0.23 grams, uh, the number of moles in 0 0.23 grams of dilute sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, as you know, the formula is H2SO4. And uh, as, as you may be aware, is, uh, the way you get the, the relative formula mass of, of H2SO4 is you add the two hydrogen masses, which is 1 times 2. Then sulfur is 32 and oxygen is 16. Here there are four oxygens. So you get that uh, the mass of uh, sulfuric acid will be 98 grams. So 98 grams is one mole. What about 0 0.23 grams? 
you just do your simple calculations there which is uh, this 0.23 grams you divide by 98 of more the number of moles is 0.0023 another example you will be asked to calculate the number of molecules molecules remember here we are talking about molecules in 0.23 grams of dilute sulfuric acid when you are asked about molecules or atoms you are being asked about particles and as we said in uh, when defining a Fogado's constant is that one mole of a substance is equal to 6.023 times 10 to power 23 particles so here we can say number of moles here when you are told that uh, we have been given 0.23 grams of sulfuric acid you convert and get the number of moles um, and you find that the number of moles is 2.3 times 10 to power negative 3 so we said one mole has 6.02 times 10 to power 23 particles so so the what we are getting here is um, number of moles which is 2.3 uh, times 10 to power negative 3 we calculate now the number of particles there which is equal to that 2.3 times 10 to power negative 3 times 6.02 times 10 to power 23 you get that the number of molecules is 1.3846 times 10 to power 21 so so that's how you calculate the number of molecules as i've said if you ask about molecules or atoms you are being asked about particles so let us continue another example here you may be asked to look for number of atoms in 0.23 grams of oxygen remember as i've said when you ask about atoms or the molecules you are being asked about particles so you apply the the avogadro's constant so here what we are supposed to do is one mole of uh, oxygen we know it is 32 grams so because oxygen gas of course uh, has uh, two two atoms of oxygen so now we look for how many moles are there in 0 0.2 grams of oxygen gas now the 0 0.23 divided by 32 you get that the number of moles is 0 0.00718 moles which if you write in the standard form will be 7.18 times 10 to one negative 3 so one mole, as we said, uh, is 6.023 times 10 to power 23. So now you can look for the number of particles in 7.18 times 10 to power negative 3 moles. Once uh, you calculate, which is just to multiply uh, that 7.18 times 10 to power negative 3 by 6.02 times 10 to power 23, you get that the number of um, atoms is 4.322 times 10 to power 21 but remember that one molecule of oxygen gas has two oxygen atoms so you multiply by two so that you get that um, the total number of atoms uh, will be 8.644 times 10 to power 21 atoms so that is another example let's look at another one here you may be asked to calculate the number of atoms of carbon and oxygen in 0 0.23 grams of carbon 4 oxide remember carbon 4 oxide is composed of oxygen and carbon so what you need to check first you know that the molar mass of carbon is normally 12 so and that one of oxygen is normally 16 so molar mass of carbon 4 oxide co2 is 12 plus 32 which is 44 grams so number of moles of uh, number of moles of carbon four oxide in 0 0.23 grams of the same you divide the 0 0.23 grams by 44 and get that the number of moles is 5.22 times 10 to power negative 3 so now here we are being asked about uh, number of atoms let us look at number of molecules so we are saying that um, in one mole we said it is 6.02 times 10 to power 23 so in 5.22 times 10 to power negative 3 it will be you just take that 5.22 times 10 to power negative 3 you multiply by 6.02 times 10 to power 23 and you get that the total number of molecules is 3.142 times 10 to power 21 so that is the total number of particles in the 0 0.23 grams of carbon four oxide so now we look for number of atoms of ca carbon atoms remember 
uh, CO2 has one, for every one molecule of CO2, there is one carbon atom. So, so you multiply that, uh, what you've gotten here, 3.142 times 10 to the power 21 by 1, uh, because there is only one carbon atom, and uh, therefore you'll be able to get that uh, the number of uh, carbon atoms will be mean 3.142 times 10 to power 21. In terms of oxygen, there are two uh, uh, oxygen atoms in one molecule of uh, of uh, of carbon of carbon four oxide. So you will multiply that 31.42 times 10 to power 21 by two, and you will be able to get that the total number of atoms of oxygen is 6.284 times 10 to the power 21. So if you want to get exactly the total number of uh, atoms, so you add both the, the carbon the carbon atoms and oxygen atoms and you get that the total will be 9.426 times 10 to the power 21. So that, that's, those are some of the calculations that you find in this particular topic. Now let us look at empirical and molecular formula, another area that is uh, common within, within this topic. So we we'll first uh, define what is empirical formula. Empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio in which elements combine to form a compound. Like for example CO2. Uh, the simplest form, uh, form in which uh, carbon and oxygen um, combine is 1 is to 2. So that is what empirical formula is. Let us look at an example. And here we look at examples in form of experiments. We are looking at heating of copper in a crucible. So we, we, we look at... Uh, uh, when um, the, the crucible was measured, this is an experiment that was carried out, the crucible without anything was 15.6 grams. Now, after adding some copper, it became 18.4 grams. Then, um, the crucible plus what after heating, uh, heating the copper in the crucible, the total weight became 19.1 grams so mass of copper used will be the 18.4 what was the measure of uh, both the combined uh, crucible and copper minus the measure of, of, of uh, crucible only you get that the total weight of copper was 2.8 grams so then mass of oxygen that reacted with copper remember we are burning uh, copper which is inside the crucible and, uh, and, and you find that after burning it combines with oxygen. So the amount of oxygen is 19.1 grams which was the measure after heating minus the measure before heating 18.4 you get 0 0.7 grams. So the amount of oxygen was 0 0.77 grams. So you find that uh, moles of copper used um, 2.8 you divide by the molar mass of copper which is 63.5 together the moles are 0 0.0441 then the moles of oxygen used will be 0 0.7 grams divided by 16 grams the molar mass of uh, oxygen you find that 0 0.0441 moles of copper were used so you can find that the ratio of the two reactants copper to oxygen is uh, 0 0.0441 is to 0 0.0441 which is 1 is to 1 so you can devise the empirical formula of copper um, oxide to be CuO because one copper and one oxygen so let us look at uh, you may take some notes from that experiment there was color change of course from uh, copper to copper oxide which is brown to black Magnesium cannot be used instead of copper in this experiment because a lot of it will be generated making it react with both oxygen and nitrogen and form both uh, oxygen, and, uh, I mean um, uh, magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride uh, resulting in errors uh, in, the, in the experiment. Let us look at um, example 2. Now here we are reducing copper oxide to copper. So we have put uh, put the copper oxide in a boat and before putting the copper oxide we noted oxide we noted that the 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 the, 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 the weight of the boat was 15.6 grams we put copper and then it became 19.1 before heating 
then after heating the whole combination became 18.4 grams so you can see there is a reduction from 19.1 to 18.4 so from there you can be able to deduce that the mass of copper oxide used was 19.1 minus 15.6 so remember the boat was 15.6 then we added copper oxide so copper oxide is what we measure we got after adding copper oxide minus the measure of the boat before adding copper oxide it is 3.5 grams the mass of oxygen that was reduced remember before heating it was 19.1 after heating it reduced to 18.4 so you get that the measure of oxygen is 19.1 minus 18.4 which is 0 0.7 grams if you look at the mass of copper is what has remained after hitting 18.4 you minus the measure of the boat which is 15.6 and therefore copper is 2.8 grams so the number of moles of copper used is 2.8 divided by 63.4 you get again 0.0441 moles and then the moles of oxygen 0.7 divided by 16 which is the molar mass of oxygen you get 0.0441 moles so the ratio is 0.0441 is to 0.0441 which adds up being um, 0 0.1 1 is to 1 so the ratio is 1 is to 1 meaning that the uh, magnesium uh, the copper oxide is CuO it's because uh, copper is 1 and oxygen is 1 so some notes in this experiment is that there will be color change of course now from black to brown then the magnesium oxide is unsuitable because the metal is high in the activity series and none of the reducing agents is strong enough to reduce the oxygen to, to metal a stream of hydrogen should be passed before copper oxide is heated to clear air in the apparatus because if hydrogen is burnt in presence of air there will be an explosion you need to know that a stream of hydrogen should also be passed after completing the exercise or the experiment to avoid hot copper being deoxidized to copper to oxide and interfere with the results of the experiment so sources of error in this experiment one is that all copper 2 oxide may not be reduced and two some two ox copper some copper 2 oxide may be blown out by the reducing agent so the 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 equation of the experiment as you can see here mm -hmm. then uh, let's look at another example example three where 1.4 grams of an oxide of magnesium contains 0 0.84 grams by mass of magnesium determine its empirical formula mm -hmm. you've been given there the molar masses for 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 oxygen for magnesium is 24 and for oxygen is 16 as you may be aware so mass of oxygen here is 1.4 minus 0 0.84 remember we have been told 0 0.84 is the mass of magnesium so if you, you remove that from the overall uh, mass then you get that oxygen is 0 0.54 grams so moles of magnesium is 0 0.84 divided by 24 you get it to be 0 0.035 and moles of oxygen is 0 0.56 divided by 16 you get it to be 0 0.035 so you find that the ratio is 1 is to 1 and therefore the empirical formula will be MgO Mg being magnesium O being oxygen let us look at something called molecular formula. What is molecular formula? Molecular formula is the actual number of each kind of atoms present in a mole molecule of a compound. You will find that um, a compound like, uh, for example, butene. Butene, you will find that uh, butene is normally, it's, it's, it's empirical, it's a molecular formula, it's normally six, C6H12. H12. So there, there, are, there are 12 hydrogens and 6 carbons. But if you simplify it, if you simplify it further, this is a molecular formula. Molecular formula gives you the exact number. C6 H12. But if you look at the empirical formula, you will simplify this and uh, divide by 6, divide by 6. You will be left with C H2 will be left with CH2 as the empirical formula. So empirical formula is the simplified, the least ratio 
the least uh, that you can get in the issues. But molecular formula is the actuals that combine to form a compound. So, so that is the difference between the molecular formula and the empirical formula. Now, the thing you need to know is there is something called, and there is some relationship between the relative formula mass and the relative empir empirical formula. And the relationship is uh, M, M here, uh, that is the, the, the determinant or the, the number that you use to, to, to convert an empir empirical formula into a, a molecular formula. And it is normally calculated by the dividing the relative formula mass of the compound with its relative empirical formula. Let us get it better by doing some examples. And M is a whole number. So you can also conf convert this uh, formula into relative empirical formula multiplied by n giving you relative formula mass. So let us do it by example. So example one, a hydrocarbon was found to contain 92.3% carbon and the remaining hydrogen. If the molecular mass of the compound is 78, determine the molecular formula. <coughs> So this is how we do it. Mass of carbon we are told is 92.3. Therefore, mass of hydrogen will be 7.7. .7. Remember, hydrocarbon is composed of only carbon and hydrogen. So here, out of 100%, if 92.3 is carbon, the remaining 7.7 .7 will be hydrogen. Therefore, carbon moles will be 92.3 divided by 12. You find that uh, you say that the form, yes, you know the molar mass of carbon is 12. So you find that the number of moles of carbon is 7.7. .7. The same way, the number of moles of hydrogen is the 7.7 .7 divided by 1. Well, as you know, 1 is the molar mass of hydrogen, so therefore you get 7.7. .7. So if you look at the ratio 1 is to 1, and therefore you find that the molecular formula, uh, empirical formula, sorry, will be, will be 1, is, will be CH if you are to do the the in the empirical formula but now we are being asked for molecular formula so molecular formula therefore you calculate what is the mass of of, of the molecule which is 12 plus one because there is only one 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 hydrogen and one 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 carbon so 12 plus one gives you that thing so given that um, the relative formula mass is 78 as we saw in our formula up there, n is equal to the relative formula mass of a relative empirical formula. So you divide 78 by 13 and you get your n to be 6. Now to get the molecular formula, you multiply your CH, which is the empirical formula, times 6 and you get that, um, you get that your, your, your relative, uh, I mean your molecular formula will be C6H6. So that is an example, and that's how you calculate the, the molecular formula. Let us do more examples here. Uh, let us look at example two. Example two here, we, we, we have a hydrocarbon that burns completely in air to form 5.2 grams of carbon 4 oxide and 2.16 grams of water. If the molecular mass of the hydrocarbon is 84, draw and name its molecular structure. So let us go through that. Uh, <laughs> since hydrocarbon contains only carbon and hydrogen, the mass of carbon in CO2, remember, uh, after burning, we got carbon 4 oxide, which uh, we've been told uh, is 5.28 grams, and we also got uh, some water, which is uh, 2.16 grams. So mass of carbon, so carbon uh, went to carbon dioxide. So mass of carbon in carbon dioxide will be empirical. You know the molar mass of um, carbon is 12. So it will be 12 divided by 44. 44 now is the uh, formula mass for CO2, the molecular mass for CO2. So 12 over CO2 times 5.28. Remember, we are saying in 44 grams of CO2, there is 12 grams of carbon. So, so that is the proportion. So if you multiply by 5.28, which is what was produced at carbon and 4 oxide, you will got, get the exact amount of, uh, of, of, of uh, carbon in that 5.28, and you find it to be 1.44 grams. The same way, you calculate the amount mass of water 
in the, in the I mean in mass of hydrogen in the water formed, which is two of eighteen. Remember, in water there are two atoms of um, hydrogen, and each is one gram. So the amount of total measure for for hydrogen is two out of eighteen. Combined, of course, as you know, it will be 18, the two hydrogens plus 16 for oxygen. So 2 divided over 18 multiplied by 2.16, and you get that the amount of hydrogen there in that water was 0 0.24 grams. Now you convert this, these uh, weights of um, carbon and hydrogen into moles by, by dividing with the RAM, the molar mass of the d of the d of the two of the two elements. So you, you divide 1.44 by 12, you get 0.12 moles of carbon, and then you find that the moles of hydrogen is 0.24 divided by one, which is 0.24. So if you look at the ratio, 0.12 is to 0.24 is one is to two. So the empirical formula will be CH2. So relative empirical formula will be C, which is 12 plus 2H which is 2 so it will be 14 because it's 12 plus 2 is 14 therefore you can be able to get the molecular formula which is 84 divided by 14 and to get M which is 6 and then you multiply 6 by CH2 you get that your molecular formula will be C6H12 so now then you can draw the structure and uh, from your organic chemistry lessons you find that uh, that's how the structure looks like. So thank you very much. Let us continue. The molecular name of the compound uh, hydrocarbon is hexene from your organic chemistry classes. So far so good. Let us look at uh, moral gas volumes. Moral gas volumes is another aspect of this topic that you also need to be aware and therefore let us quickly look at it so volume molar gas volume a volume occupied by one mole of all gases at the same temperature and pressure is what is called molar gas volume the volume occupied by one mole of all gases and it is normally 24 dm cubic or 24 liters or 24,000 cm cubic at room temperature and pressure then it is normally equal to 22.4 dm cubic, 22.4 liters or 22,400 cm cubic at start. So example one, calculate the number of particles present in 2.24 dm cubic of oxygen at standard temperature and pressure. So as we said, 22.4 dm is... Uh, what is occupied by one node which has 6.0 times 10 to the power 23 particles. So you'll find that uh, here, already we know that uh, for 22.4 dm it is 6.0 times 10 to the power 23 particles. So what about 2.24 dm cubic? If you do a simple cross, exam, cross, uh, cross, cross multiplication, you'll find that 2.24 times 6.0 times 10 to the power 23 divided by 22.4 will give you the answer which is 6.0 times 10 to power 22. But remember that oxygen gas has two atoms, so you multiply by two uh, because of that, that particular fact. So once you multiply by two, you get your answer to be 12 times 10 to power 22, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 to power 23. So let us look at another example where you are asked to calculate the number of particles present in 2.24 dm cubic of carbon 4 oxide at standard temperature and pressure. You find as we say that 22.4 dm cubic is occupied by one mole of any gas which is equal to 6.0 times 10 to the power 23 particles. So if you do your cross examination looking for the number of particles in two, occupying 2.2 for dm cubic you find that it is 2.24 times 6.0 times 10 to the power 23 divided by 22.4 and you get that your answer is 6.0 times 10 to the power 
times 10 to power 22. Here you need to multiply by 3 because uh, carbon 4 oxide has 1 carbon and 2 oxygen. So those are 3 atoms. So you multiply by 3, you get that um, the answer you get will be 18 times 10 to power 22, which is 1.8 times 10 to power 23. So let us look at another example 3 where you are told that uh, 0.135 grams of a gaseous hydrocarbon X on complete combustion produces 0.41 grams of carbon 4 oxide and 0.209 grams of water. 0.29 grams of this hydrocarbon X occupies 120 centimeter cubic at room temperature and one atmospheric pressure. Name X and draw its molecular structure. So these are kind of a somewhat uh, bit complex uh, example, but these are the questions that you'll get in exams. So what you need to do is first of all, you know that the molar mass of CO2, carbon dioxide, is 44, and molar mass of water is H2, O, I mean is 18. So mass of carbon in CO2 produced. Uh, here we say in carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon occupies 12 grams, 12 out of 44. If you multiply by what was produced, which is 0 0.41, you find that the amount of uh, carbon in what was produced was 0 0.1118 grams. The same way you calculate for hydrogen. You know that in hydrogen, out of 18 grams, two are I mean, uh, in water, out of 18 grams, two are hydrogen. So you get the component of hydrogen in what was produced, which is uh, 0 0.209. So 2 out of 18 multiplied by 0 0.209, you get that hydrogen was 0 0.0232 grams. So with that, now you can convert what you've got in its masses to moles. So you get that the moles of carbon are 0 0.0093 and moles of hydrogen are 0 0.0232. Now you can look at the ratio by which they combine and uh, once you look at that ratio, you will find that it will be 2 is to 5. Now from there, we can now try to identify uh, what is the more, uh, what is the relative uh, formula mass for that particular compound X. Remember, we are told that 0 0.29 uh, grams of this particular hydrocarbon occupies 120 centimeter cubic. And we know that uh, one mole of the same compound should occupy 24,000 centimeter cubic. So we just look for what is the mass of one mole. So 0 0.29 grams occupies 120 centimeter cubic. What about 24,000 centimeter? cubic. If you do your calculation, you find that you what you need to do is to multiply that 0 0.29 by 24,000 and then divide by 120 and you get that the more, more the latiform molecular mass of this uh, compound is 58 grams. Now once you get that 58 grams, you can now be able to calculate N. So we find that as I said, the, the more ratio for the carbon and the hydrogen is 2 is to 5 and therefore you find that the empirical formula will be C2H5. With that, now you can be able to calculate uh, the, the, the relative empirical formula by adding C, C, remember C2, that is 12 times 2 is 24. 24 plus 5 because hydrogen has one one so you get that the 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 relative empirical formula will be equal to 29 29 so what you need to get is n and n you get it by dividing the um, formula mass which is 58 by the relative empirical mass which is 29 you get your n to be 2. So the relative formula, the molecular formula, the molecular formula will be C2H5 multiplied by N2, you get it to be C410. C410, as you know from your um, organic chemistry, is butane, and uh, the structure is as I've placed there. So those are the questions you expect to get in, the, in this particular area. Let us look at another area in uh, within the same topic of mole, uh, is what we call graphimetric analysis. 
So uh, this analysis of relationship between masses of reactants and the volumes and or masses of products. So you are looking at the relationship between masses of uh, what is reacting versus uh, the masses and volumes of what is produced after reaction. All reactants are in no ratios to their products in accordance to the stoichiometric equation. As you know, the equations must balance. So there is always a ratio between the reactants and the products. So using the null ratio, any volume and mass can be determined. Let us look at examples. That is the easiest way of understanding these things. So for example, this uh, equation here, you are asked to calculate volume of carbon four oxide at room temperature and pressure that is produced when 5 grams of calcium carbonate is strongly heated and you are given the different um, different molar masses there and even the the volume the volumes that are occupied uh, by Pamul. so you write your equation calcium carbonate is being burned to produce calcium oxide and, 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 and carbon four oxide. So if you write the equation and you balance, you find that the ratios of the reactants versus product is one is to one is to one. So now a mass of calcium carbonate, if you do the calculation there, you find that it is uh, 100 grams. Then 100 grams of calcium carbonate produces 24 dm cubic of uh, carbon four oxide at room temperature and pressure. Remember, that's what we said. So now we are saying how much volume of carbon four oxide will five grams of calcium carbonate produce? It is easy. One hundred gram produces twenty-four dm cubic. What about five grams? So you do your cross uh, multiplications there. You find that the answer is gotten by five point zero times twenty-four divided by a hundred. You find that it produces one point two dm cubic which is 1,200 centimeter cubic. Let us look at another example where you are told that one gram of alloy of aluminium and copper were reacted with excess hydrochloric acid. If 840 centimeter cubic of hydrogen at STP were produced, calculate the percentage of copper in the alloy. And you are given the different uh, molar masses there and even the the volumes of occupied at uh, by one mole at uh, STP. So one thing we know is that copper does not react with hydrochloric acid. So an alloy of aluminium and copper, uh, it's only uh, aluminium uh, in the alloy that will be able to react with the uh, hydrochloric acid. So if you write the, the equation, you find that two aluminiums react with six hydrochloric acids to produce two aluminium chlorides and three hydrogen three hydrogens so the more aluminum ratio of the reactants is two is to three two aluminum and mm, no two aluminum sorry two aluminums produce if I that two aluminums produce three hydrogens from 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 the equation the way we, we have we have we have written it there so now from there you are able so we are saying moles of hydrogen is 840 divided by 22400. You find that the moles of hydrogen was 0 0.0375 moles. And the moles of aluminium is 2 that. Remember we have said 2 aluminiums produce 3 hydrogens. So aluminium will be 2 thirds of hydrogen. So it will be 2 that times 0 0.0375 which is 0 0.025 moles. So those are the moles of uh, aluminium. The mass of aluminium is equal to the moles of aluminium multiplied by the molar mass of aluminium, which is 0 0.025 times 27. You get that uh, the mass of aluminium is 0 0.67 grams. So therefore, the mass of copper will be what was the total, what was the total mass, which was one gram minus 0 0.675 of aluminium, you will find that the copper is 0 0.325 grams. So percentage of copper was 0 0.325 divided by 1 multiplied by 100, you get that copper was 32.5%. Let us also look at another concept here called gay lussacs rule. And this one says that when gases combine, they do so in a simple volumes, ratios, 
to each other and to their gaseous products at constant temperature and pressure. So let us look at an example. Most of these, these um, areas will be examined through calculations. You are told to calculate the volume of oxygen required to completely react with 50 centimeter cubic of hydrogen gas. So hydrogen plus oxygen produces water. If you write the equation, uh, you find that two hydrogens, one oxygen gives you two waters. So the ratio is two hydrogen and one oxygen. Remember you have been asked about the amount of oxygen required to react with the hydrogen. So you find that, you find that, um, that uh, two hydrogens react with one oxygen uh, to, to produce, produce, to produce to, to in this particular reaction. So reacting volumes we are saying is 50 is to 25 because it's two, two, it is 2 is to 1. We are told that 50 centimeter cubic of hydrogen is required. So the volume of oxygen required will be 25 centimeter cubic. Let us look at example 2. If 5 centimeter cubic of hydrocarbon CXHY burn in 15 centimeter cubic of oxygen to form 10 centimeter cubic of carbon 4 oxide and 10 centimeter cubic of water vapor steam, obtain the equation for the reaction and hence find the value of X and Y in CXHY. So we find that the chemical equation will be CXHY plus oxygen to produce CO2 plus H2 because we know that it is uh, the product will be carbon 4 oxide and water. So the ratios as we have been told 5 centimeter cubic of CXHY reacts with 15 centimeter cubic of oxygen to produce 10 centimeter cubic of carbon dioxide and 10 centimeter cubic of water. So we find that the ratios are 5 is to 15 is to 10 is to 10 which is equal to 1 is to 3 is to 2 is to 2. So you've balanced the equation you find that uh, now for now you write the equation CXY which is 1 we see we've seen here the the ratio is one for that one uh -huh, plus three oxygens three o two plus two c o two plus two uh, you get two c o two and two 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 h two o so you find that four h four hydrogens if four hydrogens if four you find that uh, four hydrogens are in 2H2O. If you look at the product here, if you look at the product here, you find that there are four hydrogens. So this other side means that hydrogens have to add up to four. So Y is, Y must be four because H, Y, Y is what is the measure of hydrogen. On the other, the other hand, the oxygens, the the carbons you find that from the products there are two carbons that means c here must must be two so the the formula of the of the, the, the two c so so there are two two carbons so you find that the formula of the hydrocarbon is c2h4 which is even so thank you very much i think uh, we can go up to there today uh, we will look at the second part of this topic, it is an expansive topic, that was part one, so next time, very few, few days to come, we will look at uh, part two of that topic. Thank you, see you next time.